when we evaluate a limit, our first step is to always substitute our c value in for x. So I'm going to put that here. Number one, solving for a limit, you are going to substitute your c in for x. In our previous video, I have done that here. I've gone in and I've plugged in my c value, and I end up getting 0 over 0. This is an indeterminate form, and essentially what it's telling me to do is to do more work. Okay, I'm not ready to answer my limit. I've got to do something to figure it out. Okay, so when we run into this indeterminate form, one thing that I can do to work around this issue is I'm going to go ahead and factor and simplify. If I can factor my function, it might help me figure out my answer. So in this case, I can factor my x cubed plus 1. Okay, it's the sum of cubes, so we can use the pattern to factor that out. So this is now the limit as x approaches negative 1 of x plus 1 times x squared minus x plus 1 all over x plus 1. So we plugged in our negative 1, we got 0 over 0, so I've got to do more work, so I decided to factor. So I factored my x cubed plus 1, and I get my x plus 1 times x squared minus x plus 1. This is helpful because now I have an x plus 1 divided by an x plus 1. I'm going to come in and I'm going to reduce those down to 1, which leaves me with a limit as x approaches negative 1 of x squared minus x plus 1. Once we've done this, I'm going to go ahead and go back to my first step. And I'm going to just substitute in and see what happens. So I'm going to replace my x with my c value, which in this case is negative 1. And I end up with 1 plus 1 plus 1, and I get 3. If you remember from our previous video, when we looked at the table, our limit equaled 3, and now we're able to see it algebraically. So when we get that indeterminate form, 0 over 0, I've got to do more work to solve the limit. In this case, my work, I factored and simplified. So let's look at another example real fast. So here... We are going to look at the limit as x approaches 5, the square root of x minus the square root of 5 over x minus 5. Okay, so I have my limit. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to substitute in. So if I substitute in my 5, I'm going to get the square root of 5 minus the square root of 5 over 5 minus 5. And that's going to give me 0 over 0. Okay, my limit doesn't equal 0 over 0, so I erased my equal sign because this is an indeterminate form. Again, it's telling me I got to do more work. So that's what I'm going to do. Okay, but in this case, factoring is not going to be a good idea. So here, because of those square roots, our radicals, I am going to go ahead and multiply by my conjugate. This is another option. I'm going to multiply by my conjugate and again, simplify. So if you remember, a conjugate, we're just going to switch our signs. So I have the limit as x approaches 5, square root of x minus the square root of 5 over x minus 5. When I come in and multiply by the conjugate, I'm just going to change this negative to a positive. So now I'm going to multiply the square root of x plus the square root of 5. If I multiply to the numerator, we have to multiply to the denominator. Okay. The cool thing about conjugates, if you remember, that's going to give me the difference of squares. So when I distribute these two values together, it's going to give me the difference of squares. Square root of x times the square root of x is going to give me x. The square root of 5 times the square root of 5 
is going to give me 5. Again, this happens after I distribute. So I've already distributed. This is what's going to happen, okay? But you have to fully distribute to see that happen. So we get x minus 5 here, and in the denominator, I am not going to distribute, and hopefully it's obvious as to why. I'm not going to distribute these together because at this point, I have an x minus 5 divided by an x minus 5, and that was the whole goal, okay? This problem is set up that multiplying by the conjugate makes this really simple. So now, again, I'm able to simplify, and now I have the limit as x approaches 5 of 1 over the square root of x plus the square root of 5. So after I multiply by my conjugate and simplify, I'm ready to come back and substitute. So I'm going to plug that in. I'm going to get 1 over the square root of 5 plus the square root of 5, which is going to give me 1 over 2 root 5. And we have a number, we have a value, that is my limit. So when we're evaluating limits, go ahead and plug your C value in. If you get out a numerical value, you're done, sweet. But if you end up with our 0 over 0, that's an indeterminate form, we're going to have to do some algebra to figure it out. Here are the two examples we did. We factored, simplified, sweet. We multiplied by the conjugate, simplified, sweet. We might run into other factors or other algebraic approaches we need to do. We might have to um, foil and do the algebra that way. So we might have to do some distrib distributing to be able to simplify. So I'm just going to put foil just because we're used to that term. We might have to foil together, simplify that way. We might have to find common denominators. And this list can go on and on. So just depending on each problem, it might present us with different algebra. So do the algebra, simplify out the issue, resubstitute in. Okay? Let me know if you got questions. That didn't stop the recording.